Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, it's time for something that ticks me off again. What is it this time? Well, it's plasma TVs. In this case, specifically Panasonic plasma TVs. Why? Well, I've got a 42 inch uh, top of the range Viera Panasonic plasma TV. I've only had it for like two and a half years or something like that and it just died the other day. Well, it didn't just die. Here's a photo of the um, actual problem. Take a look at it. As you can see, there's a big black uh, uh, stripe uh, column missing down the right hand side and then these thin white lines on it. And I was just sitting there watching and bang, there it goes. You know? This, and this TV is hardly used at all. It's, um, it's in the main, it's in the lounge room, which, you know, we might use it to just watch a DVD occasionally. So it probably only gets like 50 or 100 hours use a year at, at, at best, really. So it's hardly had any use at all, and it's failed in two and a half years. Urgh! And of course, it, uh, I opted not to get the extended warranty. <laughs> Yeah, stupid me, right? But hey, you know, it was really expensive at the, at the time. It was like four or five hundred dollars or something for the extended warranty. So screw that. And I knew Murphy's Law was going to screw me over anyway. So even if I got the extended warranty, it wouldn't have done any good. So uh, yeah, I've, I've had a quote to, uh, to actually get it uh, fixed. And no, it's, um, it's not just one of the boards that's failed. It turns out it's the actual plasma screen itself and to fix it twelve hundred and seventy five dollars i can buy a brand new one for that or less than that it's crazy ah oh, bloody plasma tvs they tick me off i bought a top of the range panasonic because i knew you know plasma tvs were notorious for failing and things like that and there's the plasma graveyard out there with all these screens that have just died and well, I thought I'd get, you know, Panasonic is supposed to make the best plasma TVs in the business. So I thought, you know, I'm pretty safe with that. And I knew it wasn't going to get much use. So, you know, I expected it to last a long time. Maybe the power supply or something like that would fail. I didn't expect the damn plasma thing to fail. The actual plasma screen itself. <sighs> anyway, uh, I thought what would be interesting is to um, crack it open and take a look inside. See what the engineering's like inside one of these modern plasma TVs. So let's check it out. Okay, now let's take a look inside. I've taken the back panel off here and um, there were a whole bunch of screws around the outside of it here and uh, it, it just popped off really easily. And here it is. So I'll see if I can get a wide shot. There it is sitting on the bench. It's absolutely huge, this thing. And uh, the good thing is, is that you can see it still goes on the stand. The stand still sits there and you can just um, take the panel off with it sitting on the stand. It's fantastic. I really like that. Anyway, let's take a look at it from an engineering aspect. Now, the first thing I notice is this quality uh, mains input filter here. That's a, you plug your mains up into there, and that's a mains input filter. And you notice this um, tape stuff here, this spongy sort of uh, tape stuff, that's for um, RFI to actually get a good um, RFI connection shield into the back panel and they've got a couple more down here they've got another one down here and over here on this side here this um this metallic stick on spongy tape stuff and it's it's really good the attention to detail is quite amazing and um one of the things i really noticed is um these see these little tiny um uh, screw mounts down here they're actually gone to a lot of trouble to um to get these surface mount uh, washers which extend from the screw down into the um, onto the PCB here and they've got those all over the set and it's it really is very nice now uh, the main um, power supply this is the main power supply board here and um, as you can see there's two huge caps over here and and the it's a single-sided board as you typically get in a uh, power supply that's why there's lots of links and things in there because that's cheaper to manufacture but the the uh, quality of the components is really actually quite nice the um there's some there's a couple of fuses there there's a couple of input protection uh input protection devices there and the quality of the power supply the quality of the components used is actually quite good 
Um, there's this board here. I'm not sure what this one does. It sort of it only in, interconnects with a couple of these nice blue uh, ribbon, um, uh, nice blue uh, cable bundles here. And um, yeah, it, it hooks onto the main processor board, which is this one here, um, which connects to all the input sockets. There's actually an extra board behind there, but um, this is the main, there's a huge BGA chip there. That's the main processor. Another couple of Panasonic branded uh, chips there, if you can see them. Yep, yeah, there we go. Panasonic branded. Um, and there's a, oh, there's an analog devices part. I'm not sure, ADV74998. I'm not sure what that one does off the top of my head. But that connects into the, uh, here's the um, input um, uh, RF tuner. Um, there's another block here. Um, this one doesn't have a built-in digital tuner. Um, it's just an analog one. So um, this was before the um, uh, analog, the built-in digital tuners became so cheap and prevalent. Now here's another big driver here. This board here is obviously the driver for the rows because it goes into the, via this um, nice board-to-board -board interconnect system here, it goes into these uh, row drivers. And as you can see, there's um, 16 of them down here. There's 16 row driver chips. And because this is a 1024 by 768 panel, I think you'll find that some um, 64 channels per ribbon cable, if you do the math, I think, in the top of my head, I think that's correct. So, as you can see, they're the, um, they're the row drivers, and they're Panasonic branded as well. If that can focus, there we go. And they've put this, um, this uh, gunk around the outside of the chip. I'm not sure why they've done that. Maybe for some, maybe it's actually high voltage. I'm not sure. No, it's probably not. It's, I don't know. It's just some sealing around the chip, maybe to keep um, dust or something like that out. Perhaps dust or moisture. I, I'm not quite sure. But um, now, as you can see, there's a couple of speakers down in the bottom here, either side. Now, the, this board in here, this is the um, obviously the column driver, and this is what has failed in this TV, because in, in particular this channel here. Um, now, there's no actual circuitry on this board to actually uh, do much. It's just like a little um, a driver interface, and I believe there's eight um, channels per thing. There's actually two. If we this is a little um, flat flex cable here. If we get in here and we pop that open like that, it comes down and then undo these screws and this column driver is open. And bingo, there's your two um, column driver chips. So there's actually a total of eight channels, but because there's two chips per channel, there's, um, uh, there's a total of um, 16 um, of these devices and I think that little sucker there is the one that's failed or, or, or something like that because um, it's this side of the screen um, it's this side of the panel which is actually gone out so um, yeah and that's like attached that's like embedded attached to the panel so you can't you can't really fix that that's that's actually a um, chip on um, flex on the flex um, mylar um, flexible cable thing so that, that's not really um, fixable that's why you've got to get a whole new panel okay so how do I know it's actually the plasma uh, screen itself that's failed well what I've done is I've disconnected the um, channel down here which is at fault and I believe it's just that particular chip there it's not actually this one so it's only the columns um, driven by this chip which are actually failed so um, let's I've plugged it in and let's switch it on and let's see so we should now get um, two columns that are actually missing come on power up power up and bingo there it is as you can see it's hard to get in here sorry about that but um, as you can see I've got the same fold as before with the black um, column uh, sorry yeah the black column down there with the white um, stripe and the white stripe is still there so that tells me that really um, there is something, the same folders there, even though I disconnect that channel. So really there's, you know, there's something funny going on inside the actual um, plasma screen itself. And as you can see, the extra column now, the same width column is doing a funny thing because it's not plugged in. So um, yeah, it's, you know, there's something of fault there. And I'll plug that board back in and show you that.
that extra column comes back. Okay, so here it is. I've plugged that um, channel back in and it's going to come on. And bingo, as you can see, the pictures come back from that column and I'm left with the original fault of the black um, column with the white stripe. So there you go. It does look like it is the actual plasma screen. Now, let's have a look at the quality of the uh, construction and layout on, um, on this column... Uh, sorry, row uh, driver board. These these electrolytic caps aren't in a good spot because they're between two heat sinks, and the heat sinks are going to get hot. And as I've explained in previous blogs, the um, the caps can actually um, uh, heat up, and that actually reduces their life. So that's not so good. But I can't see anywhere else you can actually um, put them though. But um, yeah, the the quality of the components used in this thing is really quite nice, and and they're excellently machine assembled and and you know it, it really is I can't see any bodgy stuff at all in this entire design and that's what you get when you buy a quality brand like a Panasonic but that didn't stop it bloody well failing did it no but um the but the quality of construction is is really quite nice and there's a couple of fans up here and they've got a um they've you know they've got the the foam surround on them just to just to quieten them down a bit and um yeah, that's just, it's just really, really superb construction. I like it. Thumbs up. So there you go. That's what's inside a modern plasma TV. And as you can see, the engineering is actually very, very good. It's quite, it's almost pornographic. The amount of engineering work that goes into, uh, you know, designing and, and building a, a plasma TV is actually quite remarkable. But, um, you know... That didn't do me any good, did it? Because the Panasonic, the bloody thing, it, it died on me after just, you know, a few hundred hours use at most. Garbage! So here's the EEV blog tip of the week. Don't buy a plasma TV. And in particular, don't buy a bloody Panasonic. I would have been better off buying two of the cheapy one hung low brand ones. I could have used one and then kept the other one in the box for the same price I paid for this damn Panasonic. I could have got the new one out and just replaced it. Oh, you know what else ticks me off? It's when you're an electrical engineer, an electronics engineer like that, and people realise that, they go, oh, can you fix my TV? You must be able to fix my TV. No, go away, I can't fix your TV. Go to your local service guy. I've got too much gear to fix a TV. I'm crippled. I've got too much knowledge. I can't do it. Let your local TV repair guy do it. He's got the parts, he's got the experience. Don't come to me. I want to have a ground. I'm about Screw to this. Sonic.